our success story show. Today is Friday. It's a beautiful day, and we have beautiful ladies today. Three special guests that are going to be joining us for about an hour sure. to share their stories. Right. Oh, my name is Maria Rene Davila. I'm the founder of the Successful Women in Business, and I'm the CEO of the Global Trade Chamber. Good morning. Happy Friday here in the United States, whatever time it is in India and England. I have no idea. All I know is today is happy hour. Not yet. Not later, yet? later. Ah. <laughs> well, it depends. In England, probably it's about to be happy hour. India, I think we're six hours different. Uh, so maybe happy hour for them. I think the, with the lockdown, it's happy hour 24 hours a day. Well, if we see the positive side, yes. You have to. You have to. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I want to bring our first guest, Al. Um, she is actually from India, and she's in India. I'm talking about, uh, you know, the COVID-19. We're going to share. Uh, well, she's going to share with us um, all what is happening right now in India. So let me introduce our guest. Uh, she's uh, Punam Soni, and you are very familiar with her because you have been in very communication right? yes Fernand is uh, an amazing lady <clears throat> uh, we met some time ago and she was uh, so impressive that we gave her an award right at the 100 successful women because sure. we are super impressed with that uh, her achievements and all the things that she did uh, welcome Punam how are you very good. Thank you so much. It's so lovely to be here. So many exciting things happening at your end. Right, guys? Yes, we have to stay positive and excited. <clears throat> Poonhan uh, is the founder and uh, president of uh, Poonhan Jewelry, which is very exclusive jewelry and has incredible accomplishments. She is a true leader and inspires many women across the globe. So we're so happy to have you with us. Tell us about your company. So um, as Al just introduced me, um, my field is jewelry, but it's jewelry with a little bit of a difference. In fact, quite a bit of a difference because uh, we do very uh, limited pieces of jewelry. The jewelry is very inspirational. Uh, we get inspired from architecture, from different uh, sectors of life. And we uh, produce very limited niche pieces for the collector. So um, it's it's uh, for the niche customer, and it's handcrafted. Uh, we've had some collections which have uh, been. Uh, I'll give you an example. We did a collection on the architectural works of Anthony Gaudi from Spain, Barcelona. So uh, we made the the pieces were made out of. Um, stained glass with gold, diamonds, precious stones. So each piece was sold with a uh, authenticity certificate from the government of Spain. So it had a Spanish emblem on it. So wow. that's the kind of different pieces that we do in jewelry. And uh, we also uh, introduce art in jewelry. So we have galloping horses painted on canvases. And we put them, or you put them on the wrist, and they are bejeweled. So each piece is so unique; it's a statement piece. So that's the kind of jewelry we do. We have a very um, loyal customer, and we do it globally, India as well as uh, we have a customer all over the world. And the pieces, I think, are very exciting because our customers uh, relate to them as uh, my piece because it's specifically made for them. And like you said, it's very um, limited edition, everything that you do, because it's handcrafted. So obviously it has to take a lot of time and dedication to create all these designs. So congratulations. Uh, I am very excited about the opportunity to meet you in person and see all your collection right now. Yes, we can't wait because Maria loves jewelry. So if you need any samples. <laughs> you can send me some samples, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we blow the world. And, you know, we relate to the customer's mood. We design uh, seeing their personality, their moods, the moment, the occasion they want it for. So it's so um, interactive. So our jewelry is really not commercial. I would call it very humanistic, very unique, bold statement. 
and uh, yeah, it's fun. And I've been doing it for 30 years now, more than 30 wow. years. Wow. Congratulations. Almost. All your life, almost. Sorry? Almost all your life. Well, yes. Um, almost all my life, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And also, Poonam, you collaborate and you work with other designers, right? Uh, international designers, like you mentioned. Yeah, so we, I uh, collaborate with like-minded uh, aesthetics, like-minded people, because um, I've collaborated with uh, Nawaz Modi Singhania. She's a friend of mine. Uh, she uh, invited me to one of her art exhibitions. So I saw these galloping horses, leopards, very vibrant and very beautiful. Her collection was called Speed. I really loved the concept. And when I met up with her to collaborate with jewelry, she was very excited. We still have the collaboration on. We did it almost eight, nine years ago. It's still one of our most popular collaborations. So I think when we collaborate, it's almost for a lifetime. We just uh, have the same... Uh, uh, personalities, the same uh, positivity, and uh, the collaborations then go a long way. So I've and, uh, even collaborated with, uh, I think, uh, a lot of uh, many brands like Judith Lieber. Uh, they had their luxury bags, and I had my exclusive jewelry there. Then uh, we've also collaborated with Valentino with his uh, exquisite. Uh, uh, collections of uh, apparels and we put our jewelry with it so uh, we've had uh, i've done a lot of collaborations and i think uh, one was with uh, michael cause when he uh, launched our jewelry at the carlisle in uh, in new york wow so history with us so i i was reading that there's a new animal collection uh, being launched George Orwell, Animal Farm. So that was the inspiration. And I think the times, because uh, George Orwell's Animal Farm was very autocratic. It uh, was very divisible. It um, differentiated between people. And uh, my Animal Farm, the animals are very happy. There's unity. <laughs> There's joy. So they were carrying luxury uh, apparels, like they're carrying a... Louis Vuitton bag, backpack, and they're playing golf. So there's a That's pig, right. and there's a rabbit, and there's a cat who's getting ready for a photo shoot with a Louis Vuitton handbag. So I think it's wow. a very fun collection. And it's already become very popular. It's already, we've unveiled it. It's all over the media in India. And uh, very soon you might see it even in America. Great. Yes, I'm um, sure we will, with all the success that Poonam is having, yeah. you know internationally. As we keep our conversation, I want to bring to the stage our second guest. Yes. Um, she's a successful lady. Uh, she's, I believe, in England. She's Delta at uh, Avil. I want to make sure that I pronounce right the last <laughs> name because I don't want to confuse with the product. Um, she's a best-seller <laughs> author and motivational speaker. Welcome, Delta. How are you? Thank you very much. I am I'm great. How are you? Good, 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 Hello. good. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, you are in England, right? Yes. Hi from England, from London. London, great. And are you originally from England? In uh, the North Amstel. Okay, so I can, I can, native. Have, have you had? No, we want to go there next year to do an event in England. We were planning to do the successful yeah. convention last year, but due to the COVID-19, we had to reschedule all our live events, were actually in-person events. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're planning to, to do this event next year. Hopefully things are going to be much better uh, there in London. Yes. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, we're super happy to have you today with us. Tell us more about what you do, Tilda. I know that you're a famous motivational speaker. So what type of uh, motivational presentations you do? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Maria and Alice. It's my honor to be here and with you today and just to have, uh, just to talk a little bit about uh, about ourselves, actually. Yes, as you introduced, my name is Teuta Abduli. 
I am a mother of two beautiful children, a motivational speaker, a parenting coach, a transformational coach. And uh, my first book, which is called Born to Stand Out and Not to Fit In, was uh, a bestseller author, uh, a bestseller in Amazon as well in six categories. And my second book is uh, soon to be released, Family Legacy of Love. I do, I do uh, deliver coaching. Uh, mentoring and in group and for families and women I have created a system which is called a master empowerment mastery system where I help women how to own their life and to live the extraordinary uh, extraordinary life and to own their brilliance also uh, with this other book which is uh, about families I'm, I'm very passionate I'm an advocate of raising successful resilient and well-behaved children with very clear and simple instruction like uh, uh, supporting them empowering and educating with uh, educating them so so that's about families and uh, and women so that is my my passion to, to help to help really to inspire Amazing. them and how to overcome how to overcome the adversaries and uh, how to live a legacy of love because you know with the kids is with the children if you want we always say that we have to change the world but the changes starts in your own homes and Absolutely. then we we'll call it a uh, wow, peaceful beautiful. world um, we need that now with the very COVID. wise words which is true you know we always very say true. that but uh, how we're doing i mean are we really doing that and everything like she said starts from at home, home at home right yes. especially now with the COVID, that's it's it, been yeah. a better opportunity for parents to better teach and raise their children all the time they spend the right their way yeah i'm gonna and definitely that. buy your books uh Thank talking you. about books teuta and also kunam they are gonna be uh, co-authors of the 100 and uh, most successful women around the world book Yes, I would like to hear that. Go ahead, Dota. Yes, I would like because you said about hundreds. I would like. I don't want to. Uh, yes, I want to mention that I would like to thank. Uh, uh, Dr. Caroline Macaque actually for nominating me. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, nearly three years. I know Caroline, which uh, I got the, the first uh, a beautiful survivors award from her. Actually, when I, I shared my story, it was it's very it's very personal and it's very very uh, next. I mean, very close to my heart that uh, that award because that's where how I, I that's where my my life started after the the accident. The big. I mean, uh, very very traumatic accident that i had actually so that's that's my that was my story actually yeah wow yeah we definitely want to read the story want to hear more about what Delta can tell us and share with us because we want to also learn we want to educate people and especially want to inspire people and motivate and motivate them. Yep. And uh, yeah. at the beginning of the program, we were talking about COVID-19 and how this pandemic is affecting and still affecting several countries worldwide. And I would like, uh, I would like to ask Poonam how things are going right now in India, because we heard the news and it really when, when we see the news and things that are happening with the second wave there in India, it's very sad. Mm. You know, we, um, we're going through a very difficult times because this is the second phase of uh, the COVID that we are going through. And uh, I think the first one, we were very lucky. Uh, it wasn't such a bad impact. The second one has been absolutely devastating. So we are all in a lockdown because I think lives are very important. And uh, I think we're all abiding by the law because it has suddenly brought uh, the whole situation into control. But uh, having said that, yes, we're not working right now. So most of it is just restructuring our brands like i'm creating a new website i'm creating a new online store um are we talking to clients on facetime we're discussing what's going to happen in the future because besides saving lives health wise it's very important that their livelihoods are also saved so i think we are working very hard so all the craftsmen can also uh, you know start uh, earning money and uh, supporting their families and then we have these young girls who are interns, who, are, who work, we work with uh, online or on virtual platform. I think it's a challenging time, but I see it clearing up in the next two, three months, very hopefully. So uh, meanwhile, we are building a very strong foundation. 
I think that uh, like uh, how to I say, your, uh, you know, your guest just spoke about uh, the children. Yes, I uh, totally agree with her that children are the future of tomorrow. So we really, really need to take care of them and bring them up in such a way that uh, they can contribute to a better world. So I resonated with that so much when uh, she spoke yeah. about it just now. That's uh, exactly what we need right now. Is we need uh, to think about legacy. It's very important because if we're not preparing the children for the future, where we're going to be, where society going to be, uh, all this confusion and panic and, and stuff that's going on, we need to be better at teaching our children how to have a better future and build a better world. Because uh, when we get older, where are we going to be? Yes. So it's a very important part of everything today is the legacy that you're leaving. Legacy, very legacy important. Legacy is huge. Delta, with the, the pandemic and, and, you know, the COVID-19, uh, I'm not sure how things are uh, in, in England yes, now. In, uh, here in, yes, here in UK, as we emerge from uh, from lockdown to a new norm now, is uh, we, we are doing well. We, I mean, in UK, we're doing well. So we come in to the new norm now after the everything that the business the digital all has uh, has changed now that before used to be like uh, the next big thing actually is now is we are living in digital uh, area so uh, yes in uk we are doing we're doing well we are very intelligent uh, human being and we get uh, we get adapted very quite quite easy isn't it and that, uh, that was actually going to be part of the question that you read my mind because I was going to ask you uh, how you are handling the pandemic and the business, how you're doing business now. And the same question for Punam, how you are doing with the pandemic, uh, with your business, because you are not doing, well, in India it's worse because they are in lockdown, but how are you doing more the virtual um, meetings? How are you doing? I'm going to start with Teuta first. Yes, uh, actually, I would say that for me has been a very productive time. You know, so this, uh, the last year, I mean, this year, I finished my second book and uh, it's been, you know, I think, I think we really needed that as a human being because we kind of, uh, we kind of lost, lost where we're so involved on the, our business. We nearly even forgot our, our family, our children. But then after the lockdown, I think we came more, more closer. We could see that the people more, uh, the kindness, the good side of their of their coming coming back and uh, just doing like this on the on the on the doors it gives it gives us that the the feeling that we all are looking for something just to be loved to give love and to receive love and uh, i think i think that uh, as well i mean with the kids uh, we became i mean we brought our uh, family values back how important it is to be with the family, to kind mm. of be together, and to really have to really understand how important is family. Whereas the scene about the business, for me, I I carried on with the vert. I kept. I mean, was we ended up doing more than than we used to do actually, just keeping up with virtuals, uh, virtual meetings, and that's uh, that's uh, I I uh, done. I mean, a few not few. I mean with the Universal Peace Federation, uh, a course, uh, seven weeks parenting course, which called the uh, Decoding Parenting Family School of Love, which was very, very successful. And uh, and carrying on with, uh, with the business, doing courses on, online, really. That's, uh, I mean, that was my, uh, my thing, like doing is, I mean, the technology now is booming. I mean, the the good thing is that you don't need to know any coding in order to use the to use the any platforms, you know. Mm. So that's that, that's, is that that is that is a good thing as well. But the innovation and uh, ecosystem offers new a new career path requires new leadership uh, behaviors and skills as well. So that which is emerging now in uh, in the area of uh, which is an underway actually. So Zoom as well has been a very competitive one. And uh, for example, like I'm hoping was described as one of the breakout tech company here in, 
in the London. I mean, in the beginning of the lockdown was like was like one. Uh, how many they said on twenty was like um, just few thousand. But in the end, like. We are there are more using like 3.5 million users on market, more than uh, like uh, 2.1 uh, billion in in uh, uh, dollars. So yeah, we use actually hoping uh, it's a virtual platform to host events. Yeah, we're and like you said, you know, technology definitely during the pandemic it uh, had a big boom in the industry uh, in any. I would say any sector in technology because everything is now about technology. I'm not sure about the jewelry industry, how you were able to handle, you know, the pandemic, how are you doing with your business for them now? So yeah. I think, uh, sorry, is that for me? Yes, for now. So um, I think, uh, you know, it's been uh, a very learning phase for all of us because uh, challenging times also teach you new things i think they're also learning times so uh, where we used to i used to do a lot of handcrafted jewelry personal interaction with clients uh, interaction with a handcraftsman it all got virtual and we learned to actually do designing also on the virtual platform so we would send the designs to the factory and they would just stay stationed at the factory not go out too much keep that distance and uh, you know they would make the designs and send it back to us on the virtual platform which we would correct and send it back similarly we did it with uh, the production factories as well as the sales so our clients are now uh, talking to us all on either zoom or on the facetime and we are showing them our ready jewelry on the virtual platform and they're booking orders so the weddings are continuing to happen in india even though on, they are on a smaller platform, our sales of jewelry have surprisingly gone up tremendously. Because earlier, wow. I think in luxury, uh, one would spend on travel, they would go on cruises, they would go and shop abroad, um, you know, they would buy all the fancy bags. But now they're scooped up in their homes. So all the brands they know, and uh, they have been with them for years, they call them up, like they've been calling us, our clients have been calling us and buying jewelry online. So the sales haven't been uh, uh, obstructed Perfect. at all, but uh, it's, it's been very uncanny. But our style of working has changed, where I think it's we are more humanistic and uh, we want to uh, we want to have a smaller, we thinned out our, uh, our uh, you know, uh, the people we work with, but the craftsmen have also found, left for their villages and they are working with their uh, families so i think it's been a, a learning time for us and a very exciting one when the industry opens out now it's going to be a very new novel a very new kind of working it's been a learning mm -hmm. phase and i think it's going to be a better phase post covid definitely you know, uh, what you said punam and also delta is uh, in several sectors and industries actually uh, the pandemic was an opportunity for them to reinvent, to uh, in, yeah. improve what they had, and now for other companies, they they see they saw the opportunity and they adapt. So now they are yeah. doing something else, and it's really yeah. about uh, when we talk about entrepreneurship. Like you, you always are looking for you know in any bad situation like in the, the pandemic or any threat that you see in your industry, you are always looking for the opportunity. And what else you can do? I mean, what is my backup plan? That is also mm -hmm. the, the the foundation of being an entrepreneur. Like, uh, yeah. what else I'm going to do? I'm not just going to stay here and die. I'm going to survive, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah. This. Yes. Yeah, this is a seismic shift, uh, shift actually, and growing new economy is bringing opportunities uh, in new career, different leadership roles, and demand of the way how to of thinking and operate in the business actually. So, yes, that's that's what it is. I mean, just uh, adapting with the new things and take opportunities because this is a, a new era, a new era of of the technology of the business growing. Absolutely. I want to say hi, Dr. Caroline Makaka. She's on the chat with us. Hi. And also Nikki. Hi, Nikki. She's in California. Hi, How are you? Great friends. I'm great so happy friends. that you're Hi, hi. Them. 
Hi, hi. Uh, Dr. Makaka is a great supporter, a great friend, a great partner, and a great yes. leader. So we're surrounded by amazing, amazing uh, women that are touching lives around the globe. That's what it is about. Touching lives, impacting women, and they need to have more mentors. Mentors, and nice. Talk about that. And, you know, talking about something more, I would say, positive, not focusing too much on the pandemic, what if we ask them about what they do to organize their day and how maybe they can share some tips with us on how they set it? Yeah, there's a lot of people who has to, no idea how to start the day or how to end it. So let's have a couple of things. Let's start with a, Hunan, well, how do you, what is your typical day? Sorry? What is your, your typical day? What is your routine? Ah, okay, my routine. <laughs> my routine is very different now what it used to be earlier. I think uh, earlier it was uh, like, um, uh, I am a Buddhist practitioner. So I would get up early in the morning, like six, seven o'clock and I meditate. So I chant a lot in the mornings. Then it would be like Pilates for me. I'd go for Pilates. my workout and um, I'd come home, breakfast. And then of course, straight to office, uh, the whole routine would be fixed uh, with uh, meetings and interviews, uh, meetings with interns, production units, uh, client uh, uh, interviews. You know, like they would come across that there would be media interviews. And then I'd get home around five or six in the evening to start the second half of my day. So five, six in the evening, I dedicate, I used to dedicate a lot of my time to my Buddhist uh, fraternity. And then uh, we would start work with our international partners because of the time difference. So uh, we have work happening in, uh, in America, in various countries, in Monte Carlo, uh, London. So, uh, and then our brand manager is in uh, LA. So uh, talking to them, talking to our clients abroad, so all of that, it was a very packed day. But now, post-COVID, I think it's more, more humanistic, more family-oriented. I get so much of time to meet and interact with my children, even on, uh, uh, even on the, you know, FaceTime. Otherwise, earlier it was like very limited time with kids. I think I've got closer to family and friends, much closer. And uh, it's been a very value-creating and of course my buddhist fraternity we're like a family and we're always trying to create value trying to do good things help even corona patients i personally do a lot of that while restructuring the brand so now it's a very different routine it's not time scheduled uh, like this it's very easy and in that easy time i uh, try and pack up everything i do a little bit of work i watch a lot of netflix now and i think with <laughs> no. a lot of friends you watch TV, you watch news. I personally feel every area of your life is value creating and you learn something from everything. So uh, a lot of movies I watched were very educational for me. They were fun and I learned a lot about whether it was French culture and I, I was just watching the Turkish film called uh, Resurrection or Tugrul. And I learned so much about Turkish culture. And uh, the world has become such a small place today. It's, it's fabulous. I think Corona had its bad moments, but you can even find value even, even in that. So that's what life is all about. I think challenges are really stepping stones to success in the long run. Well, what about you, Teota? Yes. Uh, yes, for me, what is uh, what does it look a, a daily routine is uh, I am a woman of prayer first I always pray I, I practice gratitude I am always thankful for even little things I thank God that uh, for everything for my family for my children so this is like a good 15 and sometimes 20 minutes be before I even put my feet on the ground so I have some deep moments with 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 god or whoever that whatever you call it may call it so and then i come downstairs i prepare the food for the kids and uh, i enjoy my breakfast a healthy breakfast 
with what I do with um, avocado, which is in there. I put uh, garlic and mushrooms, spinach, one egg at the side, one piece of bread, and uh, my cup of tea. And I take time because I want to enjoy. I'm a very slow eater because I want to enjoy the food. I smell I smell the food before I eat. And um, yes, and then I, I prepare the kids for school. I send them to school. I Then I when I come, I do my cleaning of the house and see, do some of the goals that I have already planned to, to go through the day. And then I have exercise class, which is 9.30. I do the exercise class, it's virtual. And then 12, 15, oh. I, have, I have another uh, exercise class, uh, meditation and some uh, yoga and uh, body uh, about, the, I mean, stretching actually, yes. And then I do some, because I'm doing some courses, and I am, uh, and then I sit and uh, carry on with the courses. So what, uh, what I'm creating, what I'm doing, because you know, and as well, I have uh, invested in myself about training because I think there is no greater thing that for yourself, what you could do yourself is to invest in yourself, because that the, the more you know, the better you can, the better you can, uh, you can act, the better you, and the more and the help you can give. To your to your clients the more positioned so for it is very important to invest in yourself to grow and to have knowledge because that is the greatest thing that you can you can give to yourself and then the time comes i go and pick up my kids i cook for the, their dinner and again in uh, i i have some training i do training i have uh, some with the very some biggest guru in there with the Les Brown is my mentor. I have Pedro Ado, which is another my uh, my mentor. This is uh, kind of uh, mostly uh, mostly every day with this uh, training, and then I have some time with my children, which I don't want undivided time with my children, and that is me and them with me, and that no one can take it from from us. It's very very precious. With them, no, and then again, and then I, fin then I finish the the day with again with the prayers. I thank God for the day. I thank God that He gathered us in the house. I thank God for for the health. I thank for my family, for my children, for all the creativity, the wisdom He gives me all the day. And uh, and this is kind of my my typical typical day. Wow. What I was going to say, Tauta and Kunam, is that uh, I asked this question because it's important for, for the, the audience, for people that is going to and is watching this uh, interview, to understand the different ways on how you can actually organize your day mm -hmm. and also appreciate your time, appreciate the people that is around you. Because yep. sometimes we take for granted. We take yep. for granted our time. Mm -hmm. We take for granted our family. And like you said, uh, to, to invest in yourself because we are too busy doing business or we're too busy working that we don't really want to find enough time for us, which is important. And in business and in life, I believe you need to have a balance to succeed. Yes. And that's one of the things that I, I, because all the interviews that we have been doing with uh, successful uh, people like you is the same uh, path. They are very grateful and um, to succeed, they have to be organized. They, so they are. Very yeah. organized. You remind priorities, priorities is key. Yeah, you reminded me about the time. It's where it came to mind what Les Brown says, one of his quotes that he says that if you lose anything in life, lose money. Because you they will they, you will earn them back again, but never lose time. Time oh, is very precious. Okay. I like that. That's I'm gonna a, use that as a for the day. <laughs> port for the day. And also yeah. you and have to put yourself first. You have, if you don't take care of yourself first, then you're done because your health is gone. You have important. to take care of yourself mentally and physically. Eat the yeah. right things. But you people always leave themselves for last. And that's not yeah. good, especially women, because they have and the children, they have the home. So they're so focused on everything around them. 
that they don't very, put themselves first. Yeah, very, very. That is very important because if we are not healthy, I mean, is as a parent first. I say to the other parents, in order to parent our children, we have to parent ourselves. If we don't are, if we are not healthy, then we cannot be able to to educate those children, to take care of the children. When we have when we have peace in ourselves, when we have love in ourselves, then we can spell love to to them, you know, and to others around us. And also to be grateful because, as you as you said as well, we live. Being, I mean, to be grateful, even the simple things, be looking for things that little miracles. I remember what uh, Cesaria said that the greatest, I mean, the, the great, I mean, gratitude is not only the greatest gift of all, but is the parent of all others. When we are grateful yes. on little things, then we can, we can, we can be grateful for even bigger ones. We cannot be trusted if we don't have, if we are not grateful for little things, and let alone for the bigger ones. Unam, uh, what are tips you can share with us to succeed in life? I think we lost her. No, she's fine. Oh, she's fine. Okay. What are the three things? I think, yeah. Unam, we cannot see you. Sorry. Can you, can you see me now? She's still her worst one. There you go. Talking about technology? Yeah, we have uh, always <laughs> technology is challenging. Can you see me? But she's like coming up on the screen. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, what I was going to say about uh, all these uh, wisdom words from Teuta is that this week I learned something important. Listen to the sign. Yes. Listen to very the good sign. lesson. Somebody yes. told me this week that mm -hmm. because there's a, there's something that uh, people say that is woman's intuition, and I 100% agree with that because Maria always tells me you should have listened to me and she, <laughs> because I had a feeling. So definitely, it's important to listen to your feelings to your. Um, yourself yeah instinct instinct you know yeah. your women yeah. that instinct yeah so I mean, oh, men too men too but the, the different that. al is that you don't listen to them <laughs> right Tota? yes 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 it's like instinct it's like just we don't sometimes we don't want to listen to our instinct <laughs> and a, yes one is back it's very is, so I think sometimes just awesome. having time and listen to yourself is like uh you know what? What listen to your emotion. Listen, listen, listen. What you have. What I mean. Just be with yourself. And sometimes we have to pause to pause that button and just turn off of the technology and just just be with yourself. Get to know yourself. Love yourself. And you, and the more we get to know ourselves. And I remember. I remember. I read once that even Einstein he used to he used to practice not like time for nothing. He yes. said that the time, time. Einstein, and and Steve, uh, Steve, uh, Steve Job, uh, Job, what is he called? I forgot. Job. Stephen, yes, Steve Jobs, isn't it? Yeah, yeah Steve Jobs from yes, from, Steve Jobs. Uh, yeah, right. Yes, and uh, they both of them practiced no time for nothing. And actually, Einstein said that the times that I kept my time when I, he said for nothing, meaning don't do nothing and just listen to your inner self. And he said those moments were my aha moments because that he said that that's when the creativity, that's where the ideas came in. And in fact, it is very true because I practice that. And sometimes when I want to do something or when I, I'm looking for an idea and a creativity, I just, and even when, I, when I'm in a shower, just being with your thoughts. And that's the moments come, aha moments, you know, that light, bold yes. moments comes, the enlightenment comes. And it's yes. very yes. important. Uh, to I and think that is going to be my mentor. Yeah, she's going to be going to mentor Maria. Yes. Some tips for women to uh, look at better times so ahead. What are some what? of your tips? Unan? Yes, so what we, I would uh, we, for we, everyone. We, for everyone who is listening, we're at Punan right now. Can you oh, hear me? okay. Yes, now I can hear you, Punan. Okay. So, um, you know, I think for me, uh, the three things which I feel are extremely important. The first is conviction. 
in yourself and passion in what you want to do. Right now, I'm talking of career. So um, I was a housewife when I started out into the jewelry business with a capital of four thousand dollars. That's it. I didn't have more money than that, and uh, I was very convinced that I'm going to make it. And I told my husband, "This is how I'm going to do it." And he looks at me and he says, "It's not going to work in India. You're going to have prices which are like uh, single price points. They're going to come and ask you how much is the gold." How much is the diamonds in this? And if you're just going to have a single price and you're not going to be open to bargaining, it's not going to work. So I told him, it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, I will close it. But I will not compromise. That's the conviction I had 31 years ago. And that conviction changed the entire jewelry industry in India because the designers sprouted up, women sprouted up doing jewelry. So in India. eventually they started calling me the pioneer of designer jewelry so there was conviction and there was passion so i know what um, my colleague was just talking about time i think those moments of introspection and time i have discovered now but for 20 years i had no time in my life it was only work work and work the amount of time i put to build a global brand i would sometimes wake up in the middle of the night and get a design and uh, i would be sitting and sketching because uh, you know i wanted to get it on paper right in the middle of the night so i have really worked hard and without that i don't think i could have been where i am today and today is my time to do meditation introspection aha moments thinking about it and really uh, spending time to become a better person but earlier it was just work focus passion conviction and belief in the person next to me i think that's something i learned in time that i had to delegate work and i had to really believe in the person who was working along with me and respect and trust them when i learned to work with people in collaboration having faith in them that is when the brand really took off to another level wow. and having said that when i was busy I had absolutely no time for negative thoughts. I didn't believe in competition, in cutting the other person down, in cheating, in trying to make a quick buck here there. I just had passion. I wanted to make good pieces of jewelry. I wanted to create, and I wanted to live and let live. So my focus was my brand and where I wanted to go. I had no time in pulling someone else down or speaking negatively of them or even thinking negatively of them. I think this um, this unifying, respectful attitude I had made more friends than enemies. And when I made more friends, that's when I could do lots of collaborations, and that's when the brand really took off. So I think ha- respecting the person next to you, having conviction, hard work, having faith in the other person, and in yourself, those key points are very important for growing a brand. That's a Definitely, the person next to you. If you don't trust them, if you don't have confidence in them, it's never going to work. Because a lot of people like controlling to keep control, and they limit themselves. You know, you micromanage. You want to have control of everything. So it's very difficult to grow today. With, with so I would like to add something to this. Yes. Uh, you know, today I have a very loyal customer. 30 years the brand has been there and today even when i'm in a lockdown they can't see or feel the jewelry but when they talk to me on the phone they ask me do you think i like it they trust me so much because they know i'm not going to cheat them i tell them yes and they order and pay those so so much a big money fine jewelry is expensive they just send it online the, they just rtgs the money Amazing. to my account and take the piece because i built that love that trust that caring I think for me, uh, loving my clients, oh, no, delivering that. that was far more important than the money I earned. And I think that loyal yeah. customer today has really paid off for me. Yeah, definitely the the trust is everything. Build trust with your clients. That's huge. And what you said, Punam, about um, three uh, words, three key words that we can learn today: uh, conviction. Definitely, conviction is extremely important for whatever you are doing, any type of business that you want to start. Uh, be consistent, be persistent, right? 
and that is something important that Puna mentioned, passion. passion. You need to have passion if you want to succeed because you need to love what you do. Why is it just a thought to wake up every day to do the work, <laughs> right? And uh, no negativity. That is so important because when you are negative, things don't go the way you expect. So being positive is important. And it's also something that you need to learn every day. It's not just like a, you wake up one day and I'm going to be positive. It's a process. But awesome. I love what you said, Unam, about um, your stage in life now because you focus a lot on building your company, your empire. And now you're saying that you want to focus on you, which is good because you already built the foundation yeah. and you're going to leave a legacy. But now you are also taking care of yourself, which is important. Do you think it's you crucial. have the balance? It's crucial to have the balance. Uh, I think that unless you have a balance in life today, you're going to die because things happen all the time that you don't expect. And if you don't have that balance, you're going to lose control of everything. So very worst, a lot of wisdom here. Delta, any final thoughts or message that you want to send our audience? Oh, you're in mute. Oh, I'm got any, any, any yes. yes, is it fine now? It's okay now? Good. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What I want to say that being where I am this moment wasn't easy. It was a long journey felt with emotion, crooked path and rough roads. But every lesson learned was worth every pain. And what I want to say to everyone who is listening to me now is live life to the fullest. Enjoy the power of present because everything else is uncertain. Take off the lid of the little you have. It doesn't matter how little it is. Because if you take off the little you have, you won't stay little for long. It is only little to something that is greater. Before the accident, I was not living my greatness. I was living little, I was comfortable. But after the accident, I was willing to die in any form of shapes of me and to give birth to a woman that I was meant and intended to do. To do. And I take my calling very seriously. And since the accident, that's when I pinned my first book, Born to Stand Out and Not to Fit In, which became a bestseller of thought. And I've become, I have shared my message to different TV channels, radio prog programs, and been featured to magazines, newspapers, and tabloids internationally. This time, I want to shine my light. I want to stand out, and so can you. The second step that I want to share with you is live intentionally. Everything you say, the way you protect yourself, the way you conduct yourself, let it be intentional and you'll see the true happiness. As Maxim Lega says, that the, that the, uh, the roots of the beauty is love and kindness and the, and the, and the meaning is, is purpose. And I remember as well that uh, when, when I was in a hospital, my son came. He was four years old at the time. With the tears in his eyes rolling in his cheeks, he said, Mommy, you're not going to die. We haven't finished our story yet. Oh. My children were my strength, my motivation, my big why, the fuel that kept me going. So I want to ask you, what is your big why? The first step is Practice gratitude. Mm. Yes. Say thank you to everything and everyone that the greatest gift of all is just being alive. I am grateful I am not the woman that I was yesterday, but I have become the woman that I am today. The fourth step is forgive. Choose to forgive and you'll see how liberating it is. As Nelson Mandela says that lack of forgiveness is like drinking poison for your own body and expecting the other person to die. Please do yourself a favor. Forgive yourself and forgive others. Also, another step, another that step that I want to share with you is surround yourself with the OPQ, only good people. Because, you know, if, if you are with the people that are negative, they will drain your energy. And no matter how, how positive you are, 
they will always will find the way to make to find the problem so instead whatever it is whatever you are going through now and i don't know what's going on in your life perhaps you are going through a, a family problem or a divorce or perhaps you're feeling uh, overwhelmed or depressed or even contemplating a suicide or ending your life but here it is what i know never never give up life is too beautiful to be wasted you never know how strong you are until you become strong as my mentor les brown says it is never it's never over until you win whatever oh, great. beautiful wow excellent i think we are we're both inspired motivated and a lot of great information to think about you both are exactly what you said surround yourself with incredible positive people and both of you are exactly that you're positive you're successful you overcome you have a, the ingredients to help other people be their best to do everything they can in life with a good attitude that's yeah. around yourself with positive people any final thoughts uh, Punam, before we end the show <laughs> i think i'd uh, i'd like to just um, add on to uh, some uh, of what was just spoken i feel life is absolutely a treasure it's precious no moment of your life should be spent begrudging Begrudging is something which is very negative. On the contrary, you're never going to have a life, none of us, which is going to be just a smooth walk. It's always going to be full of challenges. The good and the bad, the negative and the positive, they go together. And the forces complement each other. So I feel challenges in life have made me stronger, made me what I am today. There's just a small thing I want to share that if ever I had an accounts problem, or a letter from the government of India, an income tax query, I used to completely collapse. And today, I just don't get scared of anything. I'm able to handle the biggest structural income tax problems I have in my company with my business and my accounts, even without my chartered accountant. So I think life is a learning journey. And if we don't be crutch, and we take our challenges also very positively, those are the springboards for success. At that moment, we don't see it like that. But in the hindsight, when you see what the challenges have done to you, you'll be able to figure out that they've actually changed your life and made you a stronger person. The second thing I think is, it's very important to live every moment joyfully, positively, and create value in your environment. So even if you have negative people in your environment, the negative people also have positive in them. So it is your positivity which can extract the goodness in them. There's nobody who's totally bad or there's nobody who's totally good. You're going to have both in every human being. So your actions, your uh, behavior with them will extract the positive. So the power of attracting positivity is your you for success and a happy life. Oh, so wow. I, I love it. Most important I love it. I love it. I, you know, I feel so inspired with all this. It's Friday and I'm going to, I'm already happy <laughs> just because I heard all these positive thoughts about life and work. Um, Can we start a happy hour early today? Yeah, let's go to happy hour right now. <laughs> no, but thank you so much. This was a beautiful uh, interview. I'm so um, impressed. I'm happy with you and I'm very grateful also that you're part of the, the network and Success the, and, the book, and the obviously book. the book. We're gonna launch the book on June 30, remember, June 30. save the date. Save We're the gonna date. start announcing you know this live event is gonna be amazing. We already have some surprises that we're gonna share with you uh starting next week, right? Yeah? I think so. What's your book? Well you are you are also the coach. And the women and uh, and one guy. <laughs> That's what we're going to call the book. Women and women in one guy. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. We congratulate you. And we know you're going to leave a legacy that's going to touch many people across the globe. Unfortunately, we have to go. But uh, before we do, I want to mention that uh, unfortunately, 
uh, Dr. I Iman Bey Camara was uh, not able to join. Something happened with the, the computer, technology. the technology. But we're going to reschedule. That's yes. not a problem. We want to also she hear about her. She has amazing things to say. Yep. Um, again, thank you, Dr. Ma Caroline Macaca. She's always inspiring us and supporting uh, all the ladies that are part of the network. And, that, and one guy. And one guy, Alotero. <laughs> And uh, some key words that we learned today that I hope everybody remember, not just today, but, you know, every day, because we need to practice and we're going to practice by repetition. Yes. Convi conviction, passion, non-negativity, gratitude, Thanks. good habits, pray. What else? Good thanks. I love the idea. You give and thanks all day. Hour. And happy hour <laughs> every day, not only Friday. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to thank, thank Caroline so Macaca as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for inviting me. And uh, and I I, I just uh, ask to buy the book, actually, to buy the book on Amazon. Yeah. I mean, all these amazing women. I mean, what I want to say, all these women, they have been through some stuff. Yes. And they overcome those stuff. And they know what they have wrote and uh, written. And I'm sure whoever buys the book, they will never be the same. Beautiful. I, I love like it. That. I love it. Thank what you so much. Thank you. Thank Have you. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's going to be very inspirational. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We appreciate you. Stay Thank safe. you so much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Al. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and from India as well. Yes. We love, we love all you ladies. Have a wonderful weekend. Likewise. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank, Bye -bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. That was a beautiful <laughs> interview. I was so impressed with all the positive energy and the thoughts out. Amazing. So, I'm, um, you know, I think I'm going to write my own book with all these beautiful all thoughts that you and tips that all these ladies are teaching me every all day. All things you have learned, you can write a book. Yes, I like yes. that. Okay. That's a plan. For sure. Next week. Thank you so much. I will see you next week.